Jim, we travel around a lot of engineering companies and when they've got Victor machines, all I hear is the same thing, that the machines just run and run and run. Would you agree? Absolutely. You, if you have a Victor, you have a machine that will go. You walk out to it in the morning time, turn it on, your machine will start. How, how long have you had Victor machines for? We've had Victor machines from the day we started. The first new machine we ever bought was a Victor 26 in 1994. Still running perfectly, still making high precision parts, no problems. So are you telling me then that your company's only been going 24 years? When I look around the works, the buildings, the machines you've got, just 24 years? In 24 years, we have uh, increased our capacity from one machine to now having 62 machine tools, lathes, machining centers, and five axis machines. Quite tasty work you're doing as well, looking at some of these parts that the Victor's making. Um, looks like quite, uh, quite meaty components that you're machining. Well, that's why we bought this Victor 40. To, we're trying to break into the higher end uh, of the bigger diameter market. And we do a, a lot of deep grooving here, internal deep grooving as well, which is quite difficult. And if you have Victor, you will internal deep groove without any problems. No vibration, nothing. Quite hard materials then? Yes, well, we do full range of materials. Cast iron, which is quite easy to machine with, but then all the steels as well, we deal with them. Also. Okay, how do you get to where you are these days, within 25 years? How do you, how do you generate the success? Just delivering on time, being productive? Uh, flexibility, I think, would be one of our key attributes here. We can, we can provide the, the materials and the product to the people that want it on time and uh, with the quality being correct. Are you exporting a lot as well, or is it mainly for the Irish market? Uh, Irish market is about 25%, and the rest of it then is exported. We deal with companies in Sweden, Germany, France, Italy, America. We, we export to America, actually. And, and it looks like by the, the disciplines of machines that you've got, that you pretty much do everything in-house. You keep full control here. Yes, we're, we're in-house. We do our automation is done in-house. All our machines are ran in-house. We train our operators in-house. So we keep control of everything and we have everything in-house, as you say, and we can, we can, we can monitor it much better then. Uh, this, is, this is fascinating to me. We talk about the machine, and I've got to say, when that door was open, I, I've not seen a, a machine that looks you know, kind of as chunky and as robust as that for some time. Pretty, pretty heavy duty machine, but what about the automation you've got attached to it? Um, tell us about that. Well, this is an ABB robot, 60 kilo, so we can load quite big billets into that machine. Uh, it's very flexible. Uh, we change over our part, and we can have the robot up and running within three or four minutes. From, from, from the time we changed the part. Because the first thing I thought of is here, you've got a single spindle on this machine, one turret. Is it just a straight, straight lathe? You d you're not doing any milling here? No, no, this is just a two-axis lathe, um, straight lathe, milling, no milling, nothing, no finishing. We do that because nowadays the parts that we're making uh, are much more demanding and uh, the finishing on them is much more demanding. They, they require um, safety, valves in them and so forth and so forth and we find that we're better, better off milling on a mill and milling, turning on yes a, yes turning on a lathe yeah. um, this, this automation here though Jim how many how often it, or how many hours is this machine running with this robot uh, if this machine doesn't run 23 hours a day I'm quite disappointed really yes. okay what seven days a week seven days a week if it's running Saturdays and Sundays we have operatives that come in for an hour or two on a, on a Sunday morning and they will load it up with um, 50, 60 parts, and it will run. It could be running Monday morning when we come in, quite and, often. And do you do op one and op two? So are we loading the machine and then bringing the part out, turning it over and going in for op two, or are you just doing a series of op ones and then coming in and doing a series of op twos? The parts are quite complex and um, take up quite a lot of tooling, so we find that we must do op one and op two separately. We don't have enough tools in the machine. Like some of our parts could take 30, 40 tools to complete they're quite complex parts, so we find up one and up two a much better option. You're a good example of someone that started down the road of automation and noticed how good it can be because you've just continued to automate all your machines. What's the sort of return on investment you find for this, for this cell, call it? How quickly would you get a payback for both the machine and the robot? Uh, very quickly. Uh, the cell being automated, 
on an, on an eight hour shift, just a daily shift, eight hour shift, we would find 22 or 3% increase in production. No lunch break, no 10 o'clock tea. The robot is there waiting for the machine every time the machine stops. And then a big bonus is as well, we can run lights out. Uh, we run two shifts here, three shifts sometimes, and our operative can load up at 12 o'clock at night, go home, and it will run all night. What, what about, what about uh, setting it all up, programming it, making sure that it's going to the right place to pick up the part, putting it in the right place? All of those things are factors you may have to worry about, or don't you? No, we don't, because we've, gone, we've got so good ahead now. We have 28 robots now in, in, in the company at the moment, um, and we've got so good ahead, pardon me for bragging now, but we've got so good ahead that we, we just don't even think about that anymore. We're just able to do it. But for a novice, would it be easy for a novice? Was that first one easy to get to grips with? The first one, the biggest obstacle with the first one was to get our head around what it could do. I had never seen a robot up close on, on, until we got the first one. And um, yes, we were nervous, but we found that it just worked so well and everything went so well for us that, as I say, now we have 28 of them. Never any health and safety issues. Obviously, you've got full guarding here. Full guarding, we, we do that in-house as well and get, get, get it um, powder coat and so forth. And um, it's CE marked, everything up to, up, up, up to standard. No issues that way at all. What about the, the getting the thing interface, getting the robot interface to the machine? Uh, like, for example, the auto door and making sure that it all talks to each other. Who does that? Victor? Uh, when we order a machine, Victor help us out quite a bit. They give us uh, anything we want, they will give us. And uh, we'll have inputs and outputs to talk to the robot and so forth. And when the machine comes, it's ready for, for uh, a robot to be attached to it. There'd be no point in having a robot loading a machine if the machine was unreliable. So do I take from this conversation that that isn't even something that would cross your mind? With a Victor, reliability, we don't even think about reliability with a Victor. It's just the go and go. We have, we have a Victor TNS here made in 1986 and it's still making high precision parts on a robot on a daily basis, working 20, 22, 23 hours a day. So reliability with a Victor is just not an issue. They just run and run and run.